I'm really done trying to be, you know, somebody else. I don't want to be the next Tim Ferriss. I want to be the first Michael Pratt. I don't want to be the next Gary V, the next Kobe, the next LeBron, the next, you know, Alex Rodriguez. I want to be the first me. And that's really what the last 32 years of confusion and disconnect and pain and sadness and everything in my life has really been stemmed from is really focusing too much on taking this best practice from that person and that best practice from this person. You know, it has served me in some ways, but eventually I'd have to stop chasing other people and just become myself. Time to work now. Luckily we got the mother-in-law's car, so grandma doesn't have to drive us. So that's nice. You know, I'm, I look and it's February 6th already, 2020. And last year around May, you know, I made this declaration that I want to start documenting my journey to become a, a pro cyclist and take on the race across America. I did okay for a little bit. And a lot of people told me, you know, take your time, have fun, get reacquainted with the bike, and enjoy riding. My immediate, like, internal response was, oh, I'm not going to have fun and take it easy. I'm going to go hard and I'm going to get fast. I'm going to win races. And now we're here today. I haven't been in the gym since August um, which is crazy to even think of I don't even know how it goes that far and I'm frustrated right like I enjoy being in the gym I enjoy changing my body and working out and developing myself in certain ways and yeah I don't want to go to the gym and work out because I don't want to get rid of all my muscle mass yet I don't want to turn into a traditional cyclist and it's my excuse to not work on myself am I still going to train to tackle the race across America absolutely it is still a very high priority I'm still very passionate about it what's changed is though I'm going to do it my way and you know maybe my way won't win it or maybe my way won't help me set the world record like I want to. But I'm at least going to try it my way. And see what happens for the experience of it, for the sake of it. And then after I understand what works and doesn't work for me. What brings me happiness for me. Then I'll change my strategy. You know, I was watching an interview. Terrible at names. I believe his name is Jason Momoa guy who plays Aquaman the guy who plays Aquaman and is in the frontier and he was talking about how he loves beer and beer makes him happy so his meal program he skips carbs all day so he can have a beer with lunch and dinner like you wouldn't think that looking at Aquaman you know who's supposed to be a superhero and all of his abs and his big arms that that was a, a guy drinking beer twice a day and it is and it was just proof positive that someone's always going to have an opinion. The world's always going to feed you a best practice or what's working now and all kinds of other tactics and strategies. And I'm just tired of listening to them. Like, I'm a serial information consumer so that way I can, you know, have tons of data points and different ideas to, to get me to where I'm going. But I didn't used to take them such to heart. I used to learn it so it's a nice to have not an absolute must and I'm uh, this is me pushing to get back to that so I've been up for a little bit I was getting ready to go get me some coffee and uh, I decided I'd wait a minute because I was going to stop and get some food too I'm sitting here watching some YouTube and then I realized I left the car running because uh, I was heating it up. So, you know, I've been sitting on the couch for like 20 minutes. My car's just outside burning gas and getting nice and toasty. Wasn't it pretty? So I turned the car on, but I must have forgot to turn on the heat because it's been running for 20 minutes and it's still covered in snow.
So it is about 1.15. I have to be at work in about an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm running to the gym real quick because luckily I only live a quarter mile from the gym. So I'm running to the gym real quick, get a quick workout in. Um, it's the first workout since probably end of August. So I'm a little disappointed in myself. A little nervous how this is going to feel. Not trying to do a whole lot, just trying to remind myself that, you know, this is some place that I enjoy being and try to get some work in. So just got out of the gym. My phone actually got full going in because I forgot to delete the deleted photos, so the deleted photo file. So I ended up not having any room when I walked in. Got that taken care of. But the manager at this Planet Fitness doesn't like people recording that much. And I have my tripod, so I would have had to do some pretty ingenuitive things to record. And I don't like upsetting management, so I didn't record this time. It was a really easy workout. It's my first time back in September, maybe, April, August. And uh, so all we did today was I did back and chest, super light. Um, I see the torso as a unit. So I like working out the torso together, even though it's counterintuitive and it's not what a lot of people practice. And really what I wanted to do is I just want to shock my shoulders a little bit, passively, and see if there's anything that needed my attention. Because I historically don't have strong shoulders. Um, I've neglected them, I've abused them. So, uh, so for the workout, we did lat pull downs and seated cable rows. Uh, we did about, so we did the first set at 30% max weight, did 20, we did 50% for 15, and then we went ahead and went up to 70% max weight for 10, and then did 20% max weight for um, 20. And really the whole point was to kind of warm up the joints, going to be used to moving again, add a little bit of load to see if there's any discomfort anywhere. And we went ahead and did, did um, some machine bench, just because I didn't want to, have to worry about stabilizing first time back in the gym. You know, nervous system isn't used to carrying load. And my left shoulder's been an issue for like the last eight years. And because I don't continually work on my body, I have not fully successfully rehabbed it. Um, so yeah, so we did that, and then we did, uh, pec deck flies on the machine as well. And, uh, pretty much same sequence, you know. But yeah, that was, uh, day one back in the gym. Uh, we also did, like, 20 minutes of cardio. Nothing crazy, just, you know, three and a half miles an hour on the treadmill at a 2% grade to get the heart moving. And, uh, it felt good. I want, I really want to just call off work and stay at the gym half the day. But we're gonna go to work. on Saturday not really a lot has gone on today um, I slept in quite a bit because I was up quite late last night so I think we got in bed at like 10 o'clock went to the store did some shopping for the week so of course I'll be showing you know some of the food I'm gonna be making it's probably gonna be a lot of the same food that I made last week to be honest I like finding things that I like and eating them until I'm tired of them uh, it just keeps it simple and keeps it easy for me to organize I'm actually heading up to the store real quick to grab some water because our filter for our sink stopped working and I uh, can't, they got a lot of chlorine in their water so I don't like drinking if I don't have to. But also, you know, spent some time talking to, to the wife Ashley about recording more and how I kind of wanted to start doing this more on a full-time basis. Of course, you know, she's okay with it. She's always supported me in everything that I decided to do even if she has very little interest in actively doing it herself, you know? When you're in a relationship with somebody and you're trying to completely change your lifestyle, you know, whether it's vlogging, which is super intrusive, or even like you're just gonna change the way you eat, you know? When I went vegan, you know, we kind of had a conversation about it, you know, how that was gonna change, um, you know, 
potentially the places that we'd go visit, the restaurants, what that looked like for holidays. And uh, I think it's always important to share with your significant other, your, your own boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, whatever, you know, when you are going to be making those changes, why you're making them, um, what are the potential outcomes, you know. So I just want to be sure that I was open with her to make sure that she had an opportunity to add her feedback and, you know, not only what she thought about it, but how she might think it could impact her. And kind of go over some of the scenarios of, you know, worst case scenarios, best case scenarios. So one thing that I did promise myself this time around was I was going to do everything my way. I'm not going to spend a lot of time studying shots and camera angles like I have in the past. I'm not going to try to copy anybody else's style. Um, when I have an idea that I don't know how to execute against, that's when I'll do the research to figure out how to do it. But I'm really going to do this my own way. I'm going to do it the way that I enjoy doing. I'm going to do what comes to me. Um, naturally, I don't expect to, you know, reinvent the wheel. You know, I'm sure everything I think of has already been done or has been done or will be done. But I really want to make this my process, my journey. I'm really done trying to be, you know, somebody else. I don't want to be the next Tim Ferriss. I want to be the first Michael Pratt. I don't want to be the next Gary Vee, the next Kobe, the next LeBron, the next, you know, Alex Rodriguez. I want to be the first me. And that's really what the last 32 years of confusion and disconnect and pain and sadness and everything in my life has really been stemmed from is really focusing too much on taking this best practice from that person and that best practice from this person. You know, it has served me in some ways, but eventually I'd have to stop chasing other people and just become myself.